Okay, yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yan Liang. I'm a re researcher in IBO collaboration. And uh, today I will talk about the uh, whole brain electrophysiology atlas project on behalf of Gail and uh, EFIS Atlas Task Force in IBO. Uh, so far, uh, uh, in last decades, we have achieved a uh, huge progress in mapping out a uh, detailed uh, anatomy of a uh, mouse brain, and such as uh, this uh, brain region parcellation based on Allen common coordinates framework. Now we also uh, map out the gene expression pattern cross brain from Allen gene expression atlas and the even cellular level of single cell transcription data, again from uh, Allen brain, and brain cell atlas. However, so far we haven't uh, got any uh, detailed uh, atlas of electrophysiology across the mouse brain. So our goal in this IBO task force is to characterize basic uh, electrophysiology physiological features across the entire mouse brain and generate a complete map. So uh, by using neural pixel recording in uh, IBO uh, collaboration, we can uh, extract um, multiple effect feature from uh, spiking uh, uh, from uh, of voltage data, including AP uh, data, uh, low frequency data, and also spike uh, waveform information and combine uh, all the recording together in IBO collaboration, we have uh, uh, reached in total about uh, 1,000 insertions, which cover uh, uh, a, a large fraction of uh, uh, mouse brain. And, and then to ex extract the effect features, we uh, select random uh, steps uh, of 14 milliseconds from the single recording session, and we then combine all the data together to reach about uh, 100 million steps. Uh, steps. By uh, analyzing in, uh, those voltage data, we can we really find a lot of uh, difference across brain regions, and which uh, implies the importance of a characterize uh, such feature across the entire mouse brain. So uh, by careful, uh, Registration of the of the data we can have a uh, we, we we so far we we uh, already cre uh, create a map of multiple effect features uh, shown here uh, across the mouse brain and the way uh, you can navigate those features using this uh, website for example uh, I can show you now and when we uh, when we open. Uh, or, or open open this website that we can uh, select different feature and uh, uh, and by uh, mo modify the uh, coordinates you can see how how the uh, feature varies across different brain uh, locations. Uh, uh, why why uh, s uh, such atlas of electrophysiology is use useful? Well, first, it can help us to uh, generate a reference for other efficient recording. For example, uh, in in a, in, a, in a typical recording, we can compare our uh, recording data to the uh, our uh, our uh, atlas and to enable us to de detect any uh, anomaly. For, for example. We find that uh, during uh, disease, a certain effect feature may be uh, strongly modified in certain brain regions, such as the hippocampus. And uh, such atlas will enable us to identify uh, those uh, disease features. And second, uh, this atlas will help us to better uh, localize uh, uh, insertion of a uh, neural pixel uh, in, in recordings. Normally, uh, uh, the registration of uh, uh, of of, of uh, recordings is is done um, based on histology, uh, but uh, due to uh, deformation and distortion of shape and also individual variability, we are not sure that uh, our neural pixel recording are really target the crater brain region. 
However, the electrophysiology feature will help us to uh, identify uh, the boundary between different regions. For example, in this case, we find uh, there's a bigger difference in uh, PSD uh, features at the boundary between uh, uh, thalamus and hippocampus. And uh, therefore, uh, by knowing those fe uh, features, we can I, uh, I, uh, we, we can uh, correctly assign uh, different region identity in our recordings. Uh, moreover, we can utilize uh, those or uh, if it's a feature to decode the brain region only only based on uh, electrophysiology. And Olivia in the um, collaboration had built a decoding model that are using those uh, APLP and the spike uh, waveform to build a decoder model to decode the uh, brain regions. And here is a, a decoding result. As you can see, oh, it's a very well captured the overall pattern of brain uh, regions. And here is the overall uh, performance of a decoding model. You can see that for almost all major brain structures, a uh, decoding model based on if it's uh, very well uh, help us to uh, classify uh, different uh, brain regions. And, uh, so far, we, we, we show that uh, the uh, if the feature can help us to decode the brain region, and we, we found that um, in, in, the, in the decoding model, LP and AP provide most of information while waveform feature, uh, feature extracted from single units uh, did not uh, provide much information compared to other features. So to understand why we look more careful about our uh, uh, spike waveform features. So in, in the previous analysis, we can just uh, extract those waveforms from single units only and do the average across all single units within one channels. And uh, But uh, this procedure loses a lot of uh, information um, because single units are only a subset of spike detected, and there are many spikes are remaining. Uh, so to fully utilize such uh, in information, in instead of uh, to spike sorting, we can extract waveform information actually before sp spike sorting. And uh, with the work of Chris and uh, Han in, in Colombia, they are able to uh, extract uh, detailed uh, waveform information before spike sorting, and then use this, this information to build a brain region decoder. And you can see, uh, you know, with uh, unsort uh, uh, waveform wave features, the model much better predict a uh, different brain uh, st structure than the previous version of models. So far, we have uh, discussed uh, um, the uh, electrophysiology features across the entire mouse brain at the level of brain, uh, different brain regions where we average out all information within one area. But we know there are a lot of spatial variability even within local area. And so instead of do parcellation uh, with different brain regions, we want to build a high resolution atlas, namely to uh, average data within each spatial uh, cubic volume of 200 micron. And to build, uh, and uh, we, which will give us a detailed high resolution EFS atlas, but uh, we are limited by the, our data. So even with one thousand neural pixel recording, we still only cover like uh, about twenty percentage of uh, mouse brain at this spatial resolution. So instead, we want to use a uh, interpolation model to build a. a High resolution at last at a, uh, at a, with a full brain coverage to achieve uh, this goal, we want to utilize um, different uh, predator based on structure information, as, such as anatomic connectivity, uh, spatial location, and gene expression. Here, uh, I will mainly discuss a, a model based on gene expression, where we utilize. Uh, relationship between drink expression and the effect feature to build the interpolation model. And, uh, um, and then um, uh, with a uh, build a model, we can do interpolation to the location where we didn't have uh, effect recording. In this way, 
we get a full coverage of uh, if it features. Uh, as you can see in this part, I show you um, a full a coverage uh, if it feature at last uh, based on gene expression um, per data uh, model. Uh, and uh, uh, we can also uh, quantify the performance of a model by looking at the R square per, per data by uh, different uh, 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 for, for different effect feature and we find in our data set um, the the LFP uh, PSD uh, data are better uh, the best uh, can be described by the gene expression pattern while spiking feature are less uh, predictable based on uh, structural information like a gene expression. Uh, overall, we found that uh, gene expression can capture a lot of variance uh, in the in our EFIS data um, much better than the model only based on the brain region parcellation, uh, which indicates that uh, a lot of spatial variability of gene of uh, electrophysiology features are uh, actually um, correlates with spatial gene expression pattern instead of uh, brain region um, locations. So uh, this kind of model also enable us to identify contribution of, in, of individual genes that make a significant contribution to certain effect feature. For example, in the prediction of uh, RMS LF uh, features, we found a uh, real genes has a, a very good perform uh, performance, which uh, which also, we also find the spatial distribution of this gene correlates with the IM, uh, IMS LF uh, features. Uh, and uh, in the future, uh, this type of model can also help us to uh, identify uh, um, important uh, feature as in disease model where certain genes is knocked out. So overall, uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, everyone in the IBO collaboration and our uh, EFIS uh, uh, Atlas task force. And thank you for attention.